Well, hello, everybody. We've got Tyler and Doug here at Bronc Busters, and uh, we got Justin in the background. We're going to be bringing him in a little bit later, too, to talk about some of the stuff. So tonight, just to give you a general synopsis of our uh, topics, yep. we're going to be talking about Wheeling for a Cause. It is live, and Doug's going to go talk about that. We've got portals now live on the site. Uh, we're going to go into a little bit more answering of questions and some questions that have come up. We're going to cover website changes. Uh, Justin's been working very hard on a lot of website changes, site updates and such. And we're going to be talking about new items. We have quite a few new items on the website, some of which Doug has put on his Bronco and gone out and Bronc Buster tested and approved. So we'll talk about those. Um, anyways. So to get started, we are going to go ahead and let turn some time over to Doug to talk about wheeling for a cause. Just want to let you all know that the website is up and we're taking reservations. Uh, you can grab your tickets. You can grab your uh, RV hookup. If you're looking for a cabin, get a cabin. Start setting the dates aside. It's October 12th through the 15th. So it's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, as we said, we've talked to Uncle Ted. We've got some great things coming from him that we had last uh, last event. We're going to have even more of this event, some really cool things. Big surprise. Big surprise. Off on and that. Possibly more than one. Um, we've got some, we've got some uh, great programs coming up. I think we've got some great trail ride ideas that are that we're starting to form. So it's going to be a good time. Just want to let you know that the, that the site is up and it's ready to go. For those of you who are... Uh, uh, experienced at Katipsy Rocks, you kind of know the layout, you know the general thing, but I'm putting together a Q&A and I'm going to get that up on the site here in the next week. For those of you who may not be quite as familiar as, you know, do they allow dogs? Uh, you know, can I, can I bring alcohol? Things like th those kinds of questions. It's all on the Katipsy Rocks website, but I'm going to bring it down and put it on our website too. So be looking for that page. Uh, is, so kind of answer kind of the general questions. But start setting the side dates aside, and we're, we'll be ready to go. So a couple of things. We're going to have some uh, level one trails this time. That was a big feedback from last time, guys that were coming out that had never been out on the trails. So we're going to have some basically 101 courses, how to use the Bronco, what options your Bronco has, and how best to use it out in the train. So that is something that we've changed from last year. Thank you for the feedback um, that we got last time. Um, also, you guys might... Uh, might recognize Blanco Bronco Adventures. We have Monica and Derek have doing a lot to help us. They did a lot last year, but they're doing a lot this year. Monica is going to be putting a video together for us that kind of to kick this event off. Um, and they're, they're going to be heading up a cool competition. We yeah. can't tell you yet what it is because it's super duper secret, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, be, be looking for that and be ready for that. Um, you know, spit shine your Bronco and be have it be ready. So big thank you to them. Again, thank you to the, the guys uh, with the uh, Gulf Coast Bronco Association a couple weeks ago and all the help that they gave. Yep. And uh, we've we've had just an outpouring of support from people coming saying, hey, how can we help? How can we be part of this? So it's going to be a great event. All right. So with that, we're going to move right on into our first segment, segment and that is portals. Um, portals are live. Just as a little update, we have a little bit of video of a week ago when they were still in production. So they, our first sets of six are about done and be, getting ready to be shipped so that we can get them installed and video and everything. So we're gonna give you a little bit of a, Justin's gonna throw some video up here in just a second, showing you uh, what it looks like uh, in the uh, production process. So Justin, if you would. So this, this is kind of in the CNC machine uh, being, being built. So, um, again, this was about a week ago. So now they're being anodized right now. And we're, we're playing with a couple of different colors to decide, you know, kind of what the, what the color final color is going to be, but we're going to send some test colors out for you guys to see and get your input on, uh, some questions that came up this last, uh, this last go around that I think are pertinent, good questions. And you guys might have some more, but just as I threw stuff out on social media, we were asked a few things. Uh, so one one question, and we touched on it a little bit before. Uh, somebody asked why three gear and not four gear, and that's a very good question. That's um, a great question. Great question. The reason is it's part of the evolution process. That's something to know. Is four gears kind of the old way? Three gears is the new way. So go. Yep. So 
of, of course, they're on version four. They've been doing this for close to 20 years. They've been putting on a lot of very high end vehicles. And this is a, a, a testing process to make sure that these go very well on road and it have a very satisfactory um, process. So with that, three, three gears is a lot quieter. That's simple what it comes down to. So that, that right. adds to the quiet. You got bigger dimensions of the gearings themselves. So that makes them stronger, more effective. Yep. And then it allows for bigger bearings, which are stronger right. and, uh, and wear much, much better. That's, so that's part of that evolution process that as they experimented going from four to three, they said, wow, you know, we can make these gears stronger. They did the helicut cut as well. We can make the bearing stronger. Yeah. And, uh, and then one of the big things is, is that quietest, that quiet part matters because the three gear over the four gear on IFS, that's where you make the biggest transition in sound. A four right. gear on IFS, super de duper de loud, three gear on IFS, can't hear it over tire noise. So huge change. Again, well, helical is a big thing. And I was, I was talking to uh, somebody earlier today that's had a lot of experience running different portals in the past on different stuff. It makes a difference in that kind of chattering and when you're stopping. And anyways, it it makes for a much better user experience. So that's why on that. Another question that was asked is what kind of oil is used? It, it's regular differential oil. It's picture this as another differential. Yeah. Service is going to be pretty much identical. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have a service life of between 30 to 50,000 miles. Yeah. Um, or if you're overcautious, it doesn't hurt to, to uh, service it. You know, it, it, They're fairly cheap to service, fairly easy to service. So if you want to change that out sooner than that, that never hurts, right? Um, so it's going to be basically a, a, sing, a 90 way to think, I don't know, it, it, differential oil. There, there's many different ones out there. We're, I would say I like synthetic. Um, there's probably, uh, my personal preference is the, the, purple, the purple stuff, whatever it's called. <laughs> Maybe we, we will find these details out and we will get them out to you, but the purple stuff is our recommendation. So maybe Lone Star can can comment on here what ones he likes the most, uh, since he's probably the biggest expert when it comes to gears. Well, definitely the biggest expert on here tonight on yep. gears. 80 weight, 90. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, uh, um, Alex. So that's uh, that's a good a good use of oil right there. Um, another question was, does this unit replace the factory knuckle? It does not. The factory knuckle stays in place. This is a complete bolt on. Uh, product. So the, you retain all of the factory knuckle, the factory geometry, the factory all wheels, everything breaks. Well, all, all the same. Wheels is one of those things that it's questionable, right? Do you you can run the wheel. You can run the, the thing is, we can run the stock wheel. You're actually going to be out further than you would with a wheel offset. Um, we're working on some wheel options as well. That's that's the next thing in the uh, in the process. I've got a few things in the works there that we'll be bringing to you guys later. Uh, for some options. Tybus does offer one, but by the time we import it all the way here, it, it's, it's a little more expensive. So sure. that's something we're looking at. Um, will the factory, will the portal use the factory brakes? Yes, they will utilize completely the factory brakes. We are working with SSBC out of New York that uh, designing some other aftermarket uh, brakes because you know, especially if you're running 40 inch tires, that's uh, haven't had any problems yet, but I'm sure it's just a matter of time before, you know, that's a lot of wheel mass to stop for right. sure. So it's not a portal thing switching out the brakes, but it might be a result of portals because you're much more easily go to 40s and then you'd switch them out anyway. Yeah. And let's see, will factory wheels fit over the portal box? The answer is yes. 100%. It's designed to fit in that same diameter and still have your brake caliper and your brake pads, everything mount up the same. So um, that, that basically answers the questions that I had. Now, let's see. Aren't these the same guys who make the 25K G-Wagon portals, Ian? Yes, uh, exactly the same guys. So the important part to note with Tybus and why we chose to partner with Tybus in this is through our whole investigation of things, there's, there's only a few players out there in portals. And Tybus has the most experience. I mean, it, it flat comes down to you're talking 20 years of experience as opposed to just a couple of years with the other guys. So their their experience, and that's why they're on fourth generation. Well, yeah, and that's why they've evolved to a whole different gear set, whereas right. others that are out there doing portals are still on the old evolutions. Right. Um, they're still working off of his 
basically <laughs> second right. second version with yeah. straight cut gears and four gears from so, from a while back from quite a while back yeah um, but yeah they they have experience with very expensive high end um, g wagons of course yep and let's see any other let's see typical let's see the quiet part matters for all of our future highway miles absolutely Nobody wants to make the bron Bronco yeah. any louder than it already is. Right? And this was something that I have to tell you, when we first started working with Tybus and we were asking the questions, um, I, I basically insisted, go out there, run it on the Autobahn. I want to, you know, I want to hear it. I want to know it. I, I want you to prove it to me because us four guys with the Broncos were daily drivers. At least I'm a huge daily driver and I could not go across uh, New Mexico and Arizona on the way to Utah and get my, my ears drummed out. It just isn't, isn't going to happen. So um, they proved it to us. They're quiet as a mouse. You can't hear them over the road noise. And uh, we look forward to proving that out and showing that proof, proof of concept when we get them installed here in just a couple of weeks. Yep. So Lone Star is going to give me a little bit of correction here. And I, and that's why I said he's, he's definitely a better expert when it comes to type of oil. And so he's okay. saying that more of a conventional oil, he personally prefers 85 weight, 140. So, um, you know, this is still a, there's so many questions coming at us on this. And, and I, and that's what I appreciate. I appreciate the questions because then that forces me to think, okay, what is, you know, what is most pertinent that everybody needs to know? Yeah. Um, for you guys that don't know, we put out a blog post. So that's something that we spent a lot of time on this last week, putting a blog post together that is in the link to the description. Uh, it, the link is in the description, I should say. And then in all of our social media, uh, we have it up on our link tree. So I recommend you go and look at that. We'll be updating it. You know, some of these questions that we got here, we're going to then implement and add to the blog post because I think these are all good things to put in there. Plus, we'll be putting in there all the recommended, recommended uh, service intervals, oils, and all of that for sure. Um, but with that, with it being live now, um, we are offering a, a special deal right now that uh, hopefully takes a little bit of the pain off of the price point. Uh, for the next month, we're going to offer 0% uh, for up to 24 months. So I think we did a test run today of it, Justin did, and I think it was a couple thousand dollars down is what, what a firm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's all going to be based on how your credit is and so, so and so. But a firm basically on the test run put about a two thousand dollar down payment and then about eight hundred dollars a month uh, for the duration. So it's still, you know, a hefty amount, but it's not, you know, forking out the full amount right away. So that was that was what we're running as a special for the next thirty days. And it gets a lot done all at one time. Yes, and you can spread out the payment for two years. So here's the thing: this evolution we yeah. talked about, um, you know, playing with the Bronco for a good two years now we've learned a lot there's been some evolutions and there's been some roll illusions <laughs> yeah that, that too <laughs> but in that evolution we've learned that one of the worst things you can do is change the geometry i mean we talked about that last week but i'm going to just hit on that again here because cv axles are not a simple fix it's not just a matter of hey we'll put in the strongest aftermarket cvs we can you know, we're, we're all, we're still experiencing problems and we're working through it. I'm working with, you know, we're working with Dana right now to work through some of those problems. And it's not really a problem of an inferior product. That's, nope. that's the thing is, you know, we're not dealing with everything that they've done and researched. And then I've gone and done my own research. I've talked to a bunch of engineers and I've talked to people that have been in the off-roading world in Toyota and anything CV related off-road for years and you got to understand that, uh, in fact, I've had long conversations with Eric with Lone Star Axle about this. And, and so we're, we're working on a few solutions there. And you could literally have five different lengths of CV axle, depending on what suspension you put in your Bronco. And, you know, one of the things to, to recognize and understand, because it's something I looked at as a possible solution, is that uh, that front differential is located in a spot for a reason. A lot of that's because of the design of the engine and where that engine is does not allow for that to go more inboard. You know, if, if that center section, um, that, that differential could be inboard about even a couple inches, three, four inches would be beautiful because then you could have a longer CV axle 
the tube on the passenger side could be shorter and you could have longer CVs. Longer CVs is going to give you a lot more um, room for articulation. That's why you'll see on those race rigs, you'll literally see some, like three, four foot long CV, you know, shafts and they're, they're moving all these uh, um, back and forth as they're, they're going up and down the road. Well, we're very short. We're like a little dinosaur with its arms sticking out. You know, it's very short CVs and we start putting a lot of lift to fit those bigger tires. Not a good thing. You know, that's why I, every week I hammer on and hammer on that your best solution, if you don't want to go the expensive route, which is portals or the really expensive route, which is a, you know, awesome built long travel kit. And that is a body lift. You know, it's, it's still a really good solution. Um, not telling you don't go lift your Bronco. I'm just yeah. saying, understand that there may not ever be a hundred percent fix to CVs that, you know, not having clicking or not having grease, you know, leaking out or, you know, all these things. And, and of course everybody's working on it the best they can, yeah. but we'd hate you to climb that ladder and, but never be able to get the last couple of steps. Right. That's what we're, I mean, we're hoping that those last couple of steps get implemented, but, but again, portals is like the gumdrop trail and in, in Candyland. Everybody loves the gumdrop drop trail because you went from like the bottom of the board to the top of the board, just bang, just like that. Yep. So this is a good question to add on to the portals. He said, what shocks and lift are you planning on in addition to running with the portals? Also what size tire? So I'll tell you, the Bronco that I'm going to put portals on in the Bronkbuster family hasn't arrived yet. And I'm actually going to put it on the stock suspension to show um, how it rides on that. So the whole goal with portals is to not necessarily have to upgrade your suspension. Now, why would you? Why, why would you upgrade your suspension? Good question. And I'm not telling you you don't want to because everybody has a different plan on what they want to do. And it, depending, maybe you're going to have a big overlanding and you need some extra stiff suspension. Um, but, you know, let's talk about doing a suspension lift on top of the portal. So, you know, I'm going to, we're going to work on some ways that maybe we can get some more travel in the rear. We had a, a long talk with Lone Star uh, yesterday when I was there. And I think that's where we're going to get the Bronco. When we talk travel, the rear is where we can get more travel with some redesign of a few things, relocating of brackets, um, I think we can get a lot of travel in the rear, but you're never, ever, 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 I repeat one more time, you're never going to get the travel in an IFS vehicle that you get in a, a, a solid axle yeah. or a live solid, axle, yeah. right? And uh, if you want that, then I recommend go see uh, Eric <laughs> on here and Eric is going to set you up with a really nice yep. solid axle swap. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's different. Um, me personally, I love the ride of the IFS yep. and, uh, but so back to, I don't want to get off track too much. So back to the suspension, um, you know, talking with rad flow, I think what we would do is a zero to two in, or zero to one and a half inch so that you can basically keep that, you know, there's no reason you don't want to go too high. Um, 37 inch tires is what we're telling everybody to answer your question as the optimal tire, because remember you're going to have more ground clearance with your portals and 37s than the guy next to you that's running um, a four inch or five inch lift and 40s. It's just if you have more ground clearance. If I was willing to see the future, we're going to start obviously with 37s. And I will bet you that we'll also test out some 40s as well. Yep. And we'll give you those results. And then hopefully the 37s sneak over to my vehicle and, and disappear and He's stuck with 40s. <laughs> oh, we'll get some 37s on Dugs, right? Uh, but anyways, it's it's just I can't emphasize enough that you're you're asking for trouble if you go, especially if you go too much lift. I mean, I, I recommend a combination of the two. I know guys that have even put a uh, a three quarter inch body lift with a one inch suspension lift, so it's minimizing, right? Again, it, it's it's all a matter of you know, what works best for you, how much you're going to wheel it, um, even on road and how willing you are to have uh, those CVs start blowing apart. You know, think about it, that CV, when it's at, at that angle and it's constantly rotating and turning, you've got those folds of that rubber that's constantly at high speeds, you know, folding against each other. 
no way around that when you have a lift. When you're at a more straight geometry going down the road, you're not going to have that. So I, I, I foresee the big fix for uh, CV axles is going to be rebuild kits. And we're going to, you know, when we have the lift, we're going to just have to be used to and understand that every so often you're going to have to rebuild the boots, you know, replace mm -hmm. them, put grease in them, service them. Everything requires service. So it's a trade off, right? Yeah. Um, let's see what else we have. Let's see. You can tell I don't miss too many meals. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, bird dog. I was, I was seeing what you said. Oh, yeah, the, with your dinner. Um, what do we got here? Let's see. Do we have any other questions that I missed, uh, Justin? If not, I'm going to jump into yep. the website changes. Okay. So if, Justin, you want to come on and, and start talking about what and we can come back to questions, but for now, let's let's go in what you've done to the website and what's what we're going to see in the future here. Sure thing. Um, so we've been doing a number of updates to the website, as Tyler mentioned, and we've got a bunch of new products available. Let me pull those up now. And some of those new products we're going to talk about because we've been testing a few of these on Doug's rig. So right, right. Got some fun ones here. Yep. <clears throat> Just pull these up here. Sorry for the delay. Um, all right. So first, under lift components, we obviously have our new portal axles. Yep. So that's where you go. Lift components. You're going to see some major changes to the... Um, to the front page of the the landing page of the website, and it's almost done. But Justin's been working quite heavily to add more videos, more content that's related in there. What what other stuff are you, have you, are you changing on the website, Justin? So that's Doug and I are going through, um, as happens when you develop so fast. We don't always go and describe everything for everybody. So some of these great items are sitting here and, and maybe our professionals know how to use them, but not everybody knows how to use them. So right. in addition to going through each item one by one, we're going to make sure that they all have videos and really kind of give everybody the basics of here's what this does. Here's why you'd want it. Um, another thing we're going to start doing is make some example builds. So, you know, people who don't know what kind of setup they want. We're going to give you a couple of packages. We're going to give you a couple of ideas, builds the, of items that we know go together. Um, right. Because, you know, not every, not, not all rigs are, uni are the same, as, as we were saying before. Really, your setup mm -hmm. is going to depend on exactly what you want to do. So we're going to go ahead and, and try and help some people who, who don't know where to start. Yeah, our, our goal, guys, is to have maybe a starting for the guy that maybe just got a Bronco, doesn't even know where to start a series of questions that will then direct them in a direction that maybe helps them. Right. Yep. Um, because like a lot of us that are new to the Bronco, um, you may be like, where do I start? I have this new Bronco. I kind of have an idea what I want to do, but what's my best bang for my buck? If I'm going to get from here to here, what do I need to do? So or, or how many of you or maybe a spouse uh, thought the Bronco had a certain limitation and then got out there and discovered that it didn't have that limitation at all. And now all of a sudden you're far more, you, you want to go do more stuff and right. you don't know what to do. How do you, you know, how do you take this super capable Bronco and go do more stuff? Cause now you're super excited about it. You're not afraid anymore. It's, it's called the, uh, the Bronco addiction. And uh, <laughs> I I've experienced it. And a lot of you guys have experienced it. And that's probably why we're on here talking about $25,000 portals because you know, it solves so many of the problems and this makes it so much more fun. Right? And you're always going to underestimate your exhilaration. Yeah, right. So, so yes. yes, we're trying to make lots of different content, videos, um, longer blog posts, like we mentioned before. You know, you can find our deep dive on portals here. And we're going to be going through more items like this in the future. Um, yeah. We've also reorganized our menu to make things a little bit easier to find. Obviously, if you guys have any suggestions, email us. We're happy to, to hear what you guys think. Um, so some new items we've got, vehicle tops. 
Armadillo Hard Tops are now all available in our store. And you can go through and customize them with colors, roof racks. You can add interior liners, all that fun stuff. So a little secret just for you guys. So since we had to add, since we added the 0% 20, up to 24 months for the portals, our site doesn't let me uh, choose which products that's for. So if you guys are thinking about a hard top, you might want to utilize that this month as well. So that applies to any of our stuff. Uh, we have the 0% with the firm. So that's a, right. I'm going to let that secret out of the bag, I guess. Storewide. Storewide. Uh, so we also have uh, <laughs> performance. We have the pedal box. Pedal this box like, pro. Yeah. Pedal box pro. Yes. This is an exciting new item. Um, increases your acceleration. Uh, it does a lot of things that I think I will let Tyler and Doug uh, go into more detail. We're, we're going to come back to the pedal box after we get through <laughs> the site because uh, you know we, we got some fun stuff on that one. It, it exceeded again, my expectations. But yeah. Anyway. Again, we're just we're trying to provide lots more info, lots more uh, excitement on why you would want some of these parts. And obviously, everything we're picking is something that we believe in. Um, so we also have under accessories. The illuminated trail site. This is pretty cool. Um, this is an optional extra light turn signal that replaces that piece on the hood there of the Bronco, and it comes in black and white. Yep. And we've got a little That's video a of to install. Um, but yeah, uh, so some other things that are coming up. We're going to be uh, doing a where are we wheeling section, which has our upcoming events. And you guys can let us know about events that we may want to go to. Um, I already mentioned we're going to be doing more blog posts. Um, and yeah, we'll be, re we will be reorganizing the homepage to showcase all of this new stuff a little bit better as well. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Excellent. Thanks, Justin. Sure. So we are going to highlight one right here because yes, this is on our list tonight to talk yes. about. New Finally. I, so, Hey, and Johnny's coming to wheeling for a cause. Just want to point that out, Johnny. Thank you. Yeah. So actually we got quite a few guys. Early on registrant. Uh, Alex Dykhouse is going to be there. We've got, uh, not to get sidetracked, but just want to shout Bronco, you out. Bronco Johnny. adventures. <laughs> I, they're a big part of it. We've got Eric of Lone Star. Um, so I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm saying everybody that's on here needs to be there, but uh, yeah, we got quite a few of you guys. Oh, Terry, uh, Terry Bresser. Sorry. I'm just kind of running through the list right here. I'm sure other people watching. Uh, if you haven't, if I didn't call your name, I think Ian, did you say you're coming too? If not, I'm calling you out. Ian's coming, right? We got Kermit the Bronco coming. <laughs> All right. So quick disconnects. Quick disconnects. Yes, that is next on our list. Uh, we are finally going to get to those. We've had, uh, but before I talk, actually with that, I'm going to say we're finishing up some other products right now that we mm -hmm. talked about. Um, but the the next on our list is the the quick disconnects. Shouldn't be my, very long. It's not a hard one. We've just had so many things on my board. I've, I I have this mirror board that I share with uh, with Austin over there on you know product development. And we keep adding stuff to the list and he finally calls me up and he says, okay, Tyler, what's priority? Cause I can't do all of these. And I said, okay, all right, here's my priority. Let's get these done first. Uh, but that is a big one. Um, we'll actually have the Bronco that I have coming this week or next, whenever it shows up, will actually be on an M190 non Sasquatch, uh, uh, black diamond. Yep. So base vehicle that I'm going to put portals on and I'm going to show the capabilities of, of an M190 on portals. I think that's going to be a fun one. And so with that, I'm going to put these, uh, these quick disconnects on that too and show you that. Um, other new products that uh, we've been working on that are just about done, the, uh, the tube. So Justin, can you show up some pictures of why, what, what it is broken first? It's been a little while since we've shown these pictures of a broken tube, right? Now, this yeah. is the tube on the differential. Yeah, sorry. So on the differential, right. one of the things that we've seen over and over and over and over again is that piece right there breaking off or where yeah. the tube. Now, is that near the differential? Yeah, so you can see where it mounts. You, if you look in there, you can see where the differential is, and then you can see that tube comes along and then where it mounts. So it breaks off right there, or in a lot of cases, it breaks the shaft completely in two. Um, 
or that housing completely into it, it's a cast aluminum. It has, uh, you know, you have a rubber bushing in that part where it mounts the vehicle. So it has a certain amount of play, but again, we're running so is this, tires. Is this more of a contact issue or is this a stress issue? It's a stress issue. Okay. It's, you know, we've seen it blow out as, as early as three or four trips out, you know, Hefe with, um, Matt's recovery. Matt's off road recovery. He, he actually called me today because he's been without his Bronco for three months because now they're not replacing the whole differential. They're ordering serviceable parts and fixing it. And it was three months to get his to fix his. So three. he's going to be back up and running, but he asked me, Tyler, can I have one? Can I get, <laughs> can I get one of these first ones from you? So we're going to actually go out, install one on Hefe's Bronco and, uh, and show that, um, that capability here real soon. That's, that's one of, or, you know, basically what that is. Now we have a picture of what the new one looks like. Uh, we're next week, hopefully we'll have one showing the machining process because we're done with all the programming. Uh, Austin's finishing up the tooling and now we're going to start making. So Justin, go ahead and show that, that image. Eric has a question. Oh yeah. And we'll go back to that too. So that's the image of it. You can see the one in the back is, is kind of the, the stock one and the one in the front is the new billet piece. So it will be pretty much bulletproof. Uh, you know, you're going to break other things before you break that for sure. Um, so Derek asks, does the diff tube work with the stock intermediate shaft? Yes, it does. So basically that'll replace the housing. Um, we'll have new needle bearings in there. So that's, there's a lot of precision drilling and cutting and machining of the inside. That's why this, it, this is not an easy project. It's taken since November to kind of pull it all together. It's been a very expensive project between the tooling and the, um, the programming, the, you know, all of the R and D we, we will have it to where it'll be flippable on the, uh, um, where it mounts, because one of the next things we want to do is make it available for Bronco or for the Ranger as well. Um, so there's, there's a lot going on with it, but this is, will be available, um, within the next week on the website. Actually, Justin, do you have it on? Is it up there live right now or not yet? It is not. Um, no. I can make it tonight. It next, so. Sorry. I, I threw them on the spot. We're, we're that close to full production that we're able to start putting them on the website soon. Uh, the next thing is the hinge. We've thrown some pictures up there before, but, uh, I'm gonna have Justin throw them up again. Oh, I do not have a hinge picture ready, but I will. Oh, all right. It's fine. So we'll, we'll talk more about it so next rear week. Rear tailgate rear, hinge. Rear tailgate hinge has yep. a very teeny tiny pin. And so we've now, a lot of us have reinforced everything. So we're not putting all that pressure on the door, but now we've taken it to that weak point, which is that hinge. And so this know, will replace that weak point. Right. And uh, especially if you're carrying 40, 42s on the back end. Yeah. And then well, it doesn't, 37s. I mean, it, oh, 37s plus you put your jerry can on there. Or that's what I'm thinking for the overlanders who are putting just all Jack kinds and all of that stuff. That's on a the lot back. of weight on yeah. that. I mean, it, it's basically a, not even a quarter inch pin that goes yeah. through there. So it, it will be significantly more than three times bigger on the pin. Got to get me uh, a set of those. Steel. So it'll be hard, hard to break. Right? Yep. Um, okay. After will the hinges work? And I know there's other questions. So guys, we'll go back. Will the hinges work with aftermarket braces? Yes, hundred percent. We've designed it to have the same profile on the front, but it's going to be wider. And um, instead of cast material, it's out of solid steel. And then again, the really weak point is the the pin. The other thing that we've designed in there, Austin, in his wisdom, has designed a stop so a lot of you guys have experienced that you open your door too far and you have all that stuff on there you break your tail light or mm -hmm. um, you do some other damage to the side of the vehicle because that that little uh piston that's designed to stop the door is not enough when you start adding that heavy heavy weight mm -hmm. we've got it designed in there that the hinge will stop at a point that the stock hinge does not allow for so that's, that's one of the things that, uh, that we made sure will be in that part of it. Um, let's see. On the new products, and then we're going to go back to some of the questions on the yep. portals and stuff. Uh, we got front sway bar disconnect, the hinges, the hood light. Justin touched on that. Those are really awesome. Um, they're available on the website right now. 
and uh, it just makes for a maybe a little cleaner, nicer look than than the stock uh, sights. I'm not a big blingy guy, but it's kind of fun to have up there on the gun sights to have a, a blinker light on it. Yeah, it's, and, it's an LED. It just kind and of it's flashes. an LED that that rolls up too, mm -hmm. so it's got a little bit of bouginess to it fairly so, easy install yeah. i think it took us about 45 minutes um we're going to try and put together a little video to kind of uh, shortcut maybe a few of the things could probably do it faster than us because yeah. in true bronc buster style we did something wrong first and yeah we had, we had to, correct to, it, we had to learn it was from fun. our mistakes it was so. fun it was only 110 in the garage yeah <laughs> uh and then back to the uh power box pro power box pro so we, we've been talking with the guys over at DT. Let's start talking while. NASCAR. All right. <laughs> and, uh, and I was skeptical. Yeah. I, I've never, I, he, you know. He was skeptical. I was skeptical. I told Doug, I said, I don't know. I mean, it's, what is this going to do? It's not a tuner. It's not a program. You're not reprogramming it. So it affects warranty none. It's a 10 minute install. I mean, the hardest thing to do is setting up your phone really. And yeah, and the, uh, programming the app. The, the app takes two seconds. It, it's because all you're doing is you're unplugging the cable off the back of the the uh, the pedal, the yeah. gas pedal, plugging that in, and then inserting in the other, and then you zip tie the, that up out of the way, and that's it. That's the install. Then you got your little remote that you can sit there and play with, or yeah. you can. So you have a remote app. that you can mount in the vehicle. You can have it accessible if you want, or you can throw it in the glove box, and then there's an app. And the app is controls it. It controls it just like your goat mode, um, your 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 dial. Uh, so you you, uh, you you can use the app. You can use the the button push to move you into different modes. Now the way the the whole design around it is is it runs in four different um, goat uh, goat channels. Is one is the eco, one is the normal. One is sport and one is sport plus. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're running an eco, it just makes the eco a little bit more efficient. So you don't feel it so much in the power piece of it. I took it out on, on our local, our local freeway and ran it up and down. Um, and, but it, but it helps, it helps on the gas mileage. So it just makes the vehicle just a little bit more efficient. So, you know, we all have our Broncos, you know, you, they're not the most stellar gas mileage things in the world, especially at the high speeds. This, this ekes out a little bit more gas on the eco. So in the normal mode, though, you will absolutely sense it right off the bat. It gives you that feeling of a sports car where any pressure on the, on the gas pedal and you are right up on top of that power curve, even though you're still in normal mode. So that was impressive when we first went out on testing, testing of it was how quickly we got into the power curve just under normal uh, application of it. Then there is the sport, which is just one more step up from normal. Uh, it, it's it's even a, more responsive on on the power curve. But the sport plus, holy cow, hold on to your hats. The sport plus turns your Bronco into a Ferrari. I am not kidding. <laughs> it's the Cougars in the back seat. It was amazing. It is. It is only maybe 10 or 15%, but in a Bronco, 10 or 15%. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, that side-by-side -side racing at United Bronco, Jesse, I am coming for you. <laughs> because my little stock Bronco with my uh, Pedal Box uh, Pro is, is yeah. going to be amazing. It's going to be a really tough to beat. So if you're one of those that really likes that responsive throttle, it, yes, it, it eliminates the turbo lag, just like Terry said. It, it absolutely yeah. eliminates it. You, you know, you got you're struggling with a big rig getting on a freeway. You, uh, you're Ferrari. It's like dropping two gears and just going. So Johnny asks, any difference with the seven MT? I don't know yet because my seven MT is broken down right now. <laughs> no, actually, so an update on Bronkbuster. I have all of the parts here. My new ADV fenders should be their ship, so they should be showing up any day now. I've got. You know, I, I think I put out there on social media last week that whole center section of a Bronco that got cut out up in California out of a wrecked Bronco. So I literally found um, all the A pillar and the, the windshield, all that in one piece. So awesome. Next project, I'm gonna I want to do most of it myself because I don't know because I want to, I guess because I I don't like having free time. So right. You know. Because 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 sleeping's for losers. Sleep, sleeping for losers. Yeah, I don't need. But, but one last thing. One last thing on the pedal box. Um, pedal box pro is uh, my actually my wife borrowed 
my Bronco tonight because we had to pick up some people at the airport. And she texted me. She said, did you leave this thing on? Because this Bronco is a rocket ship. So even, even someone didn't even know it was, uh, you know, really what it was, recognized that uh, this Pedal Box Pro yeah. well, really my, enhances it. We let my 15-year-old drive little sister tonight. We went to, or earlier today, we went to go see my uh, grandson. And, and she's like, this is like driving a race car. <laughs> she was, yeah, impressive. So anyways. You guys, you guys have heard it from us. We love the pedal box. Yep. Oh, it's kind of it a is, fun little it is toy. Definitely it's... Brock Bester tested and approved. <laughs> it's, not, it's not solving any major problem. <laughs> it's just uh, may, maybe getting us into more trouble. Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe a ticket in our future, right? Uh, okay. So now I'm going to go back to some of the questions that were asked. And this one's related to portals. So back to the helical gears, they allow for more contact. Yes. Uh, but the pressure tends to push the gears away from each other. Uh, is there a thrust bearing? So the bearing that, to answer that, the bearing that they've put in this is actually designed for, I think, a seven and a half ton truck yeah. is what he said. Mm -hmm. It's way over designed. Yes, it's it's handled. Tested on a Unimog. Yeah, Heav heavily, heavily uh, tested for sure. So thank you for that question. That's a good one. Um, let's see. Right, flip bracket, uh, aftermarket wrenches. Okay. Anything else that we have that I missed? Um, yeah. Front sway bar disconnect. I've got uh, the um, hinge pictures. We can pull those up. Yeah, let's pull the hinge pictures up. Now, I don't have an updated picture because we're actually st just starting the machining uh, this week. And Justin, uh, Justin Austin is supposed to get some pictures for us. Uh, they're going to be a lot, you know, shinier cleaner this was very rough cut in the in the prototyping um we are you can see that pin difference we are offering it in powder coated black which in my mind most people that have a bracket it's going to be covered anyways they're going to want mm -hmm. but i would like to know some feedback um email you can message on here private message whatever any feedback that you guys have on custom colors because if we only get a couple, we can do it, but it becomes more expensive. And when I say custom colors, I'm only talking about painting it to match the Bronco, you know, white, you know, all the different Bronco colors, which we can do, but I have to take it to paint shop. Um, and it will add, add to the cost. As of right now, we're planning on just powder coating and black. Uh, but I would like some feedback from you guys to see if, uh, if that's something you'd like to see. So let me know. Uh, but you can see that that pin difference was huge. So, um, okay, my wife. All right, I'm going to post purple, this one up please. here. Purple, please. My wife is addicted <laughs> to purple. So we might we might have to uh, um, epic or orange. One yeah. set. <laughs> one set. <laughs> one set of purple. I might. Her birthday's coming. I might have to do some birth. <laughs> well, it's coming in a while, but yeah. We might have to come well, and it's this year is our 25 year anniversary, so maybe an anniversary present, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what other questions do we have before we bring this to a close? I feel like uh, we might get done a little early tonight, so I don't bore you guys to tears, right? Did we answer some of these? Uh, the, does it add to the width of the vehicle? Oh, I mean, I might have missed a couple, so pull some of those up. Yes, it adds to the width of the vehicle, unless you bring it back in with some offset. And even you're talk, if that- You're talking about portals. So yes, I'm sorry. Let's We'll, we'll talk yep. portals. So do portals add to the width? Yep. The, the portals themselves will mount to the existing knuckle. You're going three and three quarter inches out. And then your wheel's going to mount to that. So those of you guys that have your stock wheels and want to just run those, because they're, they're running at about a negative, I think 30 something. I mean, not negative, but a positive 30 something. So- that's still going to be sticking out um, a couple inches from um, maybe the guy that's, you know, has a wheel space and running through this. Anyways, the, the long, the, the short of it is aggressive stance. It'll give you a nice aggressive stance with the stock wheels. If you are already running an aftermarket wheel that maybe is a um, negative, I don't know, 40 or something, you're going to probably want to change it out on portals because you're going to be really wide. Yeah. So the answer is yes, it's going to make it wider unless you change that with your wheel offset. Um, what else do we have? Cost of the new diff tube. The cost of the new diff tube is right about $1,400. So uh, 
we're going to know once we start full production that it's going to be right in that, that $1,400 range. I'll have that finalized next week. So, and, and I guess the reason that we went forward, even though you could say $1,600 is a new whole new differential. And, and we knew that. And that's why, that's part of why I held off for a long time. I'm like, why, why 16, why would you do that if you can buy a new differential? Well, number one, it's a lot of labor changing that new differential. Number two, it can cause other, you know, damage and problems and leave you stranded. And so I had, I had about 10 different people come back to me and said, well, I don't want to keep replacing that. I I'd rather do it once and fix it, fix the problem. So that's why we're moving forward with it. Even though it, there's, there's a lot of machining, there's a lot of specialty tooling and a lot of, uh, a lot of time in getting it, you know, ready to start bringing. So that's, that's kind of where that cost is. And we wanted it to be less, but unfortunately that's where it is. Um, did we answer Lone Star uh, tapered roller bearings? No, I did not. Yes, they. Uh, so I'm, I'm guessing we're talking back on the portals. Portals. I haven't heard anything uh, about taper. That's a good question. That is a good question. I and don't we'll, know. We'll we'll ping Tybus about that. Yeah. But but that hasn't that the the that adjective hasn't come up. Nope, that's a new one to me. So we'll ask that question. I don't yeah. know. I would make him be on the, the live stream, but I think it's like one o'clock in the morning in Germany. And I don't think he's, he's kind of an old guy. I don't think he wants to be on. And I'm sorry if you're watching this tomorrow, Wolfgang, but you know, anyways. Um, Is there a place on the website to order two of the one and a half spacers? We actually only have them listed with the ones. That's a good question. And you know what, Justin, I've been wanting to have that conversation. I have no problem adding another line item on the website that adds two of the inch and a half. Um, well, actually, I think what he's talking about is the, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ron, but are you talking about the uh, uh, perch collar or Oh, I see. No, no, no. Okay. Sorry. My mind went in a different place. There's two things that we could, we could change on our website. And I was thinking about, so this brought it up. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. We could just split apart the uh, inch and a half spacers into a product listing. If somebody doesn't want to buy all four, um, that's something we can definitely add. And the, uh, the other one is on perch collars. I've had some people that don't want to do the level, you know, they want inch and a half perch collars in the front inch and a half perch collars on the back. And vice versa, they want inch all the way around. So uh, I'm going to say that out loud. We'll make that change on the website too for those of you guys that are looking at different options on that. That's that's no problem for us to package it up differently since we're we're the ones manufacturing them. So and see, you can make change. What's that? See, they can make change. Just we can, we can change on the fly, right? No problem. Anyway, so with that, we're excited about the new portals. Um, they, we're, we're going to be able to, you know, if I didn't answer this earlier, we'll be able to move fairly quickly on them. The orders that we've received this week, will then place our next order. We'll, we'll order them in batches. We're not going to just order one at a time because shipping is quite expensive and we'll want to make sure and order them in batches, but all the orders we get in this week, we'll place an order. It's four to six weeks until the next ones come. Um, we'll have these first sets that we'll be putting on the first six vehicles here in about a week, week and a half, they should be arriving. And we're scheduled the first part of July to start putting them on all the vehicles. And we'll be putting videos together and instructional together. We've got dealers, you know, all over the country that have had different parts of the country that want to do it. But to start with, our main one is going to be Lone Star Ring and Pinion mm -hmm. um, down there, Lone Star Axle. Um, yeah, out in Katy. Out in Katy. So Eric is is uh, near Houston, Texas. Very knowledgeable and and does great job. He's he's somebody that I trust very much. Uh, we're also going to have um, uh, one of the sets. Terry's is going to be installed right here at in uh, in Austin at uh, uh, Hellabad Broncos. So they're going to be uh, RJ is another another really good mechanic that uh, that I'm going to be working with, and we'll be getting them trained up on. And yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to work and we're going to start working with other dealers in other parts of the country as well. So don't, don't, don't think bird dog that we are, uh, that Tyler is not going to try to figure out how to break portals. No, but I'm not, not, not on my new, we're going to try. If we can't do it, that's awesome. But he's going to try. <laughs> my wife told me to, to slow down a little bit. So 
It ain't gonna happen. She she wants me alive. <laughs> A little bit, a little bit. If they, if they can be broken, we'll break them. But uh, hopefully, that's not something that can happen. Well, <laughs> my goal is to see what how they do on on an M one ninety. I really do want to see how how capable it makes an M one ninety because I've learned one thing: you can order an M one, you can order a, a stock non Sasquatch Bronco and get it pretty dang quick. Yeah. So, I mean, I ordered this one in March. And it's a couple of like months, literally already it's set on the for truck. delivery. It's on the truck. It's coming. And I'm waiting for the dealership to say it arrived. So yep. um, I think that that is going to be a good solution for some of us that are wanting to maybe trade in the Bronco we have and go to a different one. And you don't want to wait for two years. Um, that, that's, that's kind of my thinking is, is that uh, yep. Sasquatch is awesome. My opinion is Sasquatch is great. If you're pretty happy with how it is when it comes. Otherwise, I feel like in everything I've done, I've just I've been wasting a little bit of money because I've been pulling off a lot of those Sasquatch parts to upgrade. Why not start at a more base level, not pay that extra? And now the parts are available. Now, of course, when we were first getting Broncos two years ago or a year and a half, two years ago, yep. there weren't any options on the market um, at all aftermarket parts. And so Sasquatch really was the place to start. I think through the evolution of things, um, yeah, Amy, I agree. <laughs> My wife says keeping it to a minimum. Although she's caught up to me a little bit. She broke little sister more than I have. So, you know, just saying. Uh, family argument. But uh, anyways, back to uh, we're, we're hopefully going to be able to show the capabilities of a just stock M190. I mean, the only disadvantage that that one's going to have is no front locker. I hear rumors that there are maybe some eaten locker front lockers coming out for the the m190 we'll play with that a little bit but uh oh well geez see lone star just all right i'm uh, see eric i just need to ask you these questions first i can have you on here more often i'm just going to bring my uh uh bronco when it comes have you put a front locker in it then we're going to have those portals that's going to take 22 percent of the stress off of the inboard and we're going to stay stock height with 37s I think that's going to be a pretty sweet setup for not much more money. I mean, you think about it, what it costs right now to go buy a Sasquatch Badlands and get it to the capability level that this will have. I think dollar for dollar, you're going to be almost the same. So, you know, probably less, probably less, probably less and less stress on your drivetrain and less problems. Um, you know, again, warranty, you put portals on, it's going to awful hard for them to, to say that, uh, you know, your upgrades caused that, that whatever happened because you're taking that stress off. I mean, 22% stress reduction essentially is, uh, is a lot, right? It's going to be killer. So anyways, with that, if we don't have anything else, guys, I'm going to call it a night and actually I'm going to go load up Bronk Buster and go get ready to start tearing it apart. I've got my, uh, my gas quickie saw and we're going to show you me cutting it apart tomorrow. So I mean, literally a big gas cut quickie saw and I got pieces to cut. So that'll be some fun stuff. I'll film. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. And uh, we will see you next week.